Hi, I'm Kevin Seitz. And I'm Jeff Hulley. And today we're going to show you the brand new apparatus located here at Station 19. Special fire, what is the address of the emergency? What's on fire? Reporting planes coming from the roof. LPDs arriving on scene, stating fire in the stairwells as well. Multiple callers, two complaints, scene coming up the unit. House reporting trapped, but there's an older lady that lives there. She's not seen. Yesterday, January 23rd, 2020, we put engine 19, the new unit 3310, into service at station 19. What this entails is we take this truck, we wet down the wheels. The purpose of wetting down the wheels is uh, tradition. Back in the old days, the uh, spokes were wooden, and you had to wet down the wooden spokes uh, on that carriage in order for those to seat properly into the round wheel. So we wet down the wheels and then by hand we physically push this truck, 68,000 pounds, into our bay. And the point is, is we push that in, it's ready for service. We take all of the equipment off of the old rig, which was 3336, and we take those uh, tools and equipment that we need for safe operation on the fire ground and we put them into 3310. Pierce Velocity built in 2019 specifically for us and designed for us. Uh, it's got a 500 horsepower Cummins diesel engine inside of it, uh, as well as some more pump specific stuff that I'll get into once we get around to that pump panel, but we'll come around to this side. We want to pop up in, into the cab. So you have buttons all over the place, but a lot of them are for our emergency lights. Uh, so we have all these buttons up here for emergency lights activating specific ones or all of them, the Opticom to be able to change uh, change the lights on the street for us to be able to get through safely, uh, as well as scene lights to be able to light up a scene uh, and make sure that we have good visibility for everything. Uh, we have a command unit, which is a lot like in current vehicles, shows you a lot of information about the vehicle, shows us uh, who's wearing seatbelts, who's not, um, and any sort of diagnostic codes that pop up will be described on that screen. Uh, we have the ability to change into a uh, pump from inside of the rig or outside on the, on the pump panel. Um, so that's a very handy thing to do. We also have uh, wireless headsets for inside of this rig now. Um, so we don't have to deal with cords hanging down and getting all tangled up in that as well. All right, in the back of the cab here, we uh, can safely seat three firefighters. Um, at engine 19, we are an all ALS uh, apparatus, so we have a paramedic uh, on this crew so that we can provide ALS services. So in this gray kit, we, uh, we use it for higher acuity medical calls, which it contains uh, various medications for the paramedic to use uh, on a patient. We also have the Life Pack 15, which can uh, monitor uh, people's patients' cardiac uh, activity and can actively shock someone out of a bad cardiac rhythm. Very sized gloves for us to make sure that we have our personal protective equipment on. We call this a mega mover uh, to be able to move large patients or incapacitated patients. We're able to move them efficiently. Uh, it's like a big tarp, big blanket. Uh, in here we have our dive suit, dive rescue suit. Every rig, every engine and tower has a dive rescue suit in South Metro with a dive helmet to protect us. Um, intended for ice rescues uh, or anything that we need to do in that sense. Um, as we move further over, a small portable suction kit. And in here we have our frontline medical supplies that we take in on every call. The orange kit uh, has basic medical supplies as well as the oxygen kit. Uh, we take those in on every medical call that we have and attached to the orange kit is a carbon monoxide detector just in case 
we go into a scenario where there's carbon monoxide, it's a hazardous environment for us, that will let us know, and we can pull out, reevaluate, and then go back in. Another new thing with this engine is that it's a open cab design, so we're able to walk all the way through, uh, which is helpful for motor vehicle accidents when we only want to get off on a protected side, uh, as well as uh, just facilitate being able to move around the cab easier. Uh, there's much more headroom, but also uh, everything in this cab is designed to be strapped down. So we have helmet holders that hold this helmet securely in place. All of our, all of our medical kits are securely strapped in there. Flashlights, everything is locked into place. We also have a uh, Q-ray or multi-ray, uh, which is a gas detector. Um, it detects gas and hazardous environments for us to be able to determine whether they're safe for us to go into or uh, we need to back out, put on our breathing apparatus and go back in or uh, if we need to call the hazmat team, anything like that in order to mitigate that concern. Uh, with the seats, uh, seats have similar technology to the ones that we you've probably seen, but uh, they're designed to lock our bottles in. With that smart smart dock design so it locks the bottle in securely in the case of an accident anything like that that's not going to be flying around and it allows us to be able to sit in the seat comfortably even whether you we're using the pack or not all right transitioning back to the outside of the rig we have our pre-connect hose line compartment so all of these are directly piped to the pump uh, we have two inch three quarter lines uh, that are both 200 feet long. We have a two and a half inch line that's 200 feet long as well, and a 100 foot uh, trash line is what we call it, but that's for dumpster fires or car fires. Just short, short distance, we'll be able to position close and put the fire out effectively with that. So this is the pump panel and the engineer's compartment on the new engine. Uh, it's a 1500 GPM pump, and it has a capacity of 750 gallons of water, and it is uh, equipped with the uh, Husky 12 foam system, which allows us to be able to pump foam or water through any of these discharges or any discharge in general. Uh, and it also has multiple electronic valves that are easy to open and easy to read the displays. Inside of here are various appliances, different couplings, uh, different, valves, gate valves, uh, gated wise, and uh, various tools that the engineer might need in order to uh, fix hoses, uh, connect different hoses to different style couplings, and make sure that the crews are getting the water that they need. Um, down here, just more tools, uh, toe straps, uh, hose straps, duct tape, paper towels. Uh, down here, we have toolbox, small hand tools, road flares, uh, and a short section of five inch hose for a supply line. As we continue moving back the rig, we have our wildland kits with the webbing gear um, for us to use if we get deployed without the brush truck. Also, we have progressive hose packs like we have on the brush truck as well. In each one of these small compartments on the side, we keep spare air bottles with uh, bottle straps in order to be able to carry them to the scene to be able to replace them as we need them. The left rear compartment has Engineer Sight's air pack so that he can uh, go on air should he be called inside of a structure fire. Uh, it also contains uh, several portable hand lights that we can use for scene lighting ventilation fans, additional hose line to deploy uh, very quickly a two and a half inch supply line to our blitz fire, which can produce almost 500 gallons per minute. We also carry various extinguishers and salvage and overhaul kits so that we can uh, minimize damage to property after the fire is uh, completed, but application of water can cause water damage. So the more we can protect the area that we have caused damage to, or further protect the area from getting any further damage, the better um, public safety and wellness is going to be. We have a rear compartment which contains our hydrant bag. This contains various apparatus in order for us to be able to hit hydrants, 
regardless of their style. We have both Denver style hydrants and normal national hose standard thread. So we need to be able to accomplish both of them. We have a bag which contains several different cones. These are collapsible cones, cones which can extend to full size to protect us in any scene or situation, especially motor vehicle accidents in which we need to steer traffic away from the accident. We have oil dry, which we can spread down, which dries oil and makes it less hazardous for the environment. Moving on in these cabinets, we have uh, ladder hooks, we have roof hooks and pike poles. Uh, these are used for various uh, activities of firefighting in order to further minimize damage or search for extension. Rear discharge, which has both an increaser and a standard inch and a half thread for our inch and three quarter hose lines. Or to build long drawn out horizontal standpipes in which we could transport water over a long distance and then reduce it to a firefighting size attack line. We have an air dump which will lower the rear end suspension. This lowers the rear end of the truck. A deployable tray makes it easier to access the overhead compartment. In our overhead supply bed, we carry both an attic ladder, a short extension ladder, and a backboard for medical emergency use. We carry 1,000 feet of five inch supply line that we can lay in uh, if we were to use uh, to supply ourselves or to pump another apparatus, uh, such as an aerial master stream. We carry 800 feet of two and a half inch hose, which is pre-connected at the top for horizontal standpipe. This includes a gated Y, two and a half to inch and a half reducer, uh, of which we're deploying then an inch and three quarter attack line. Off of that to go long distances and then attack a fire uh, off the end of that line. All right, in addition, we have additional storage on top of the engine, the ladder that drops down. All right, so up on top of the rig, we have two separate compartments. We call these coffin boxes. Obviously, we don't put people in them. It's just what we call them. Uh, and here we have various hand tools, shovels, uh, some wildland hand tools as well, but brooms, scoop shovels, stuff like that to be able to clean up an incident um, or anything that we need to. If there's a, a liquid spill, we can dam dike, use that to, to shovel dirt and stuff that we need to. Uh, in this next one, we don't have anything really in here other than a little bit, an extra container of foam and some more oil dry, like Jeff mentioned earlier. Um, another reason for this much space up here is to support a new initiative that we have uh, regarding cancer and maintaining our dirty gear outside of the cab. So at this point, after anybody in South Metro runs a fire, we actually take all of our stinky contaminated gear and keep it outside of the cab. We have separate decon procedures, including this bucket, that's our decon bucket, that is full of soap and other cleaning materials that we'll use to do a quick decon on ourselves and our gear, and then we will actually take that, take all of our gear and put it up here, including our packs, bottles, everything like that that was in the fire and is contaminated with carcinogens. We don't bring it back into the cab that is clean and where we're gonna be sitting and spending a lot of time. Bring it up here, stow it away, and then once we get back to the station, we'll undertake the process of cleaning it and getting it back into service. As we move over here, you can see the water fill and the foam tank fill. As well as our master stream, which is actually electronically controlled, which is pretty cool. We use this to attack large fires um, or for defensive fire operations. We can use that as well. Drops back down automatically. We have our ladder rack over here. And the ladder rack will actually drop down, which I'll show you guys in just a second. 
So in order to drop the ladder back down, you get power to it. And the ladders come down. This will automatically drop the ladders down to a place where we can grab them safely, effectively. On this ladder rack, we have a 28 foot extension ladder with a 16 foot bedded length, as well as a 14 foot roof ladder with roof hooks and a 10 foot folding attic ladder. This is a section of 10 foot hard suction hose with a jet siphon attachment to it. We use this in order to draft water in case we are in an area with no hydrants uh, and we need to get water from a static water source, which includes rural water supply if we are at a structure fire that is out away from a hydrated area and we need to actually physically bring our water in. We have tenders that will bring pools of water, uh, bring pools and we'll fill them with water and then we can actually pull water from those pools and use that to fight the fire. Many of the stations of South Metro Fire Rescue have a logo and that logo represents its district and what kind of is inside of that district. Here at station 19, we've nicknamed ourselves Area 19 and we have this depiction of a little out of this world friend of ours wearing a 19's helmet. This represents not only Lockheed Martin, which is just down the street from us and is primarily protected by us, which does some otherworldly and out of this world stuff, but in addition, it, it kind of brings in uh, our mission. We are to provide out of this world service and out of this world fire protection. Inside of this right rear compartment, we have our extrication equipment. This is what the public typically refers to as the jaws of life, in which we jaws or cut something out of the vehicle, such as like a, a car post in order to better access the patient. We have both cutters, which are battery operated and operate out on a 30 degree uh, incline. This incline cutting is a new cutting edge renovation or revolution that's taking place in America. It's so that the tool doesn't actually rotate while you're cutting. So we can use a longer blade uh, and set that longer blade and cause no rotation in the cutters. They're very heavy and they operate at a pressure of 396,788 foot-pounds of pressure that's exerted in that cutting force. The tip is made out of a diamond carbide, so it's very, very strong and can cut through uh, any material that we encounter. We have spreaders, which are even heavier. These operate and spread apart uh, here together at the tines or at the forks. And those spread apart at a pressure of 29,450 pounds. So it can lift objects off of uh, people, other objects, uh, and uh, give us access to places that we normally wouldn't have access to. We have uh, various chains, ropes, settings, cribbings, uh, in order to block objects, trap objects up at certain levels or prevent them from coming back down and rescue 42s, which stabilize vehicles, sometimes at very awkward and, and odd angles, to make that scene safe and to give us working and operating room. From the second compartment, we have various cutting tools. You can see our chainsaw, as well as a K950, and an additional sawzall. These are various cutting tools to perform cutting operations, such as forcible entry or ventilation, whatever the need may be. Uh, we also keep fuel in here, various adapters, fittings, and uh, tools specifically to work on these cutting tools. Additional air bottles provide us support should we have extended operations. Various tools are used by South Metro Fire, such as forcible entry. We have what we call a pig or an halligan combination to use to uh, the key to the city to open up various doors that are locked and which we need access to in order to better uh, access fire conditions and extinguish fire rapidly. We also have a flathead axe, nice and shiny. We like to keep great care of our equipment because that's a direct reflection of the pride we take in our work. So you'll see a nice shiny truck and nice shiny tools and that's our pride and that's a privilege for us to be able to serve our citizens like that. Pickhead axe, sledgehammer, and bolt cutters. We also have a lockout kit should we uh, need to make entry into a vehicle. Uh, we can use that in order to um, 
actually access the inside of a car should somebody you know accidentally lock their child or a dog inside of their vehicle. We have a rip bag which is a standard configuration all across our apartment. Inside of it we have a replacement mask. This is a rip bag is what we call a rapid intervention team. We can provide rapid uh, intervention should one of our team members go down. So we need to be able to supply an additional mask in case they're inside of the immediately dangerous to life and health IDLH environment. We can supply them a new mask or new air depending on the needs. So we have an oxygen bottle. This is just normal breathing air that is compressed for us to breathe. It's not pure oxygen like people oftentimes think. They can supply that supplied air should one of our guys go down and we can provide uh, life-saving air while we're getting them out. We have various lights. We also have bulletproof vests uh, in order to better protect our firefighters when they are in those dangerous situations. Uh, we have two different kinds of ropes, which are both utility ropes, and they're used in the presence. Uh, they're not life safety ropes, they're just utility ropes, and they do float. We have water cans, in which we pressurize water and a light extinguishing agent, which is filled with AFFF foam to take with us inside of fires and extinguish fires, which are smaller in nature and don't demand a large water supply from a hose. Last one is just one more medical kit. This is a C collar bag, which provides uh, stabilization of the neck should the need arise. Pre-connects on this side. It's just another view from the other side. Our red is always on the right side of the truck. The red comes off the right side, the passenger side of the truck, and it comes off the rear. So it's an easy way for us to determine red, right, rear. And our two and a half discharge deploys from the right side as well. All of these are standard hose lays so that we know exactly how they deploy every single time. More discharge and inlets are on this side so that that engineer can operate off of either side of the truck should the need arise. Additional views of the cab. You see as we go by, we already talked extensively about what's in the cab. Inside the front officer seat, you can see a nice clean cab delivered to us from Pierce, performs like no other, in addition to our mobile data terminal, or what we call an MDT, which routes us to calls, gives us further instructions, gives us all uh, further information that's acquired by our dispatching center, Metcom. All right, this is a front intake uh, connection, so that's where we can connect to a hydrant off the front of the engine, uh, along with supplies to do that. If uh, the engineer needs to connect to the hydrant himself, everybody else on the rig needs to go do other stuff or continue to pull uh, attack lines, stuff like that, go do search. The engineer can use all the stuff in this compartment to uh, establish his own water supply with a hydrant and connect everything, be able to get the crew's water uh, independently from everybody else. Brush 19 was purchased in 2019. It's a 6.4 liter Dodge uh, Hemi, Hemi engine V8. Uh, it was purchased specifically for Station 19, which covers the Jefferson County open spaces and the open spaces owned by Lockheed Martin. It's been stationed here at Station 19 since 2019 and is configured specifically to operate in the wildland urban interface. It's a type six engine, is deployable, although it is not usually listed as deployable. Inside of the cab, we have plenty of space for us to operate in, plenty of space uh, for us to operate comfortably. It has various fittings and adapters for us to charge phones, operate radios, uh, do everything that we need to do for an extended period of time on an extended operation. It has four wheel drive and is uh, very off-road capable. Inside of the back is additional room for additional personnel, various flashlights, paperwork, and pre-plans, maps, and drawings. We carry several different radios on here, able to operate both on the national radio system, the BK radio system, uh, VHF, as well as a UHF for us to communicate in district. Outside of the truck, we have a booster reel, flashlights that are mounted on the truck, and mounted fuel tanks for up, us to operate both this truck, our wildland pumps, or create uh, drip torches for us to lay fire on the ground and get ahead of people. We'll show you the drip torches later. 
Alright, so inside of this cabinet, we have uh, various appliances for our hose to be able to connect to uh, other jurisdictions, other departments' hose. Uh, that's what's inside of these canisters as well. Uh, various appliances, different connections, because different departments use different hose coupling types. So we want to make sure that we're able to connect to everything. So we have a toolbox with all sorts of random hand tools, uh, tow ropes and clothes pins. And that's about that for that compartment. In here we have a short section of two and a half inch hose uh, to get a supply of water. Uh, a lot of one inch hose and then half inch hose for wildland firefighting where we use smaller diameter hose to be more mobile and uh, put the water where we actually need it. In here we have some of our wildland kits uh, with several webbing kits is what they're called that we put on to fight wildland fires as opposed to our normal bunker gear for structure fires. Gatorade water to keep us hydrated. The two rear compartments on the left side are vented. The reason for them being vented on this bottom one is a fuel storage compartment. So if we open it up, we can see this is where actual fuel is stored. Uh, we use fuel for several reasons. We use gas and oil to combine in our chainsaw in order to make the two stroke operate properly, as well as in our drip torches, which operate off of three parts diesel and one part gasoline. It's in this mixture so that we can do a sustained combustion and we can literally pour out fuel combining with fire and create a line of fire on the ground for over a designated period and then have a controlled burn up to a designated point in order to create a fire break. We have several different um, methods of carrying fuel and delivering it to exactly where we need it on the drill ground. Upper compartment is just a vented storage compartment. It's not currently in use, but we could use it to store things that need to be vented uh, and not keep all of the same air inside of that compartment at all times. On this rear side, you can see it's labeled again, fuel storage compartment. We actually don't store fuel in this compartment, but instead a chainsaw, which has fuel inside of it. So because fuel is inside of this rig, we don't want those fumes to be trapped inside. We want that continually vented to the outside. We can, you can see we can also keep a modified Pulaski. A lot of people ask why we have the flat end and that's to pound wedges. So uh, a lot of times we'll get a tree and saw it and for it to fall exactly where we need to in a controlled manner, we can insert a wedge and wedge that tree over uh, to a designated point so that we land exactly where we need to in the bedding area. All right, so this is the water pump on the brush truck. Uh, it's 300 gallon pump. It also carries 12 gallons of foam or has the capability to do so. Um, the neat thing about these pumps is that they're completely separate from the uh, motor and the engine itself. Uh, so we are able to drive and operate the pump and flow water all at the same time uh, in order to move with the moving fire that a uh, wildland interface fire tends to be. Uh, in this compartment, just a spare tire and some tire chains. On this side, this compartment can be accessed from multiple different places in case you need to get different tools. So that's just one way to access those hand tools. And here we have hard suction hoses. Uh, these are used in case we need to draft from a static water source as opposed, as opposed to uh, being supplied by a, another apparatus or by a hydrant. Uh, so we can use these hoses to be able to pull up water from a static water supply, like a pond, lake, stream, something like that. So covering the top of the truck from the rear to the front, we have the top inlets for both foam and for water. We can refill those as necessary. And here we have extra foam storage. And we carry extra gallons of foam, two separate cases, so that we can apply that however we need to and be liberal with its use.
We have the booster reel, which can be accessed off of either side, and it can be positioned off of either side. Right now it's on the driver's side, but it's very easy to switch it to passenger side operation. An overhead storage compartment contain, contains a space for extra gear for firefighters. If we were to take an extended operation, then we need to take tents, sleeping bags, uh, stuff to support us through the night so that we can wake up refreshed and ready to work. A cooler provides a place for firefighters to store drinks, water, food for those extended operations in order to keep us well hydrated. You can see while we're up here, a yellow diesel fuel tank uh, extra so that we can keep and have that on hand uh, to better support uh, firefighting operations. All right, so in this compartment, there's nothing in here yet, uh, but it's always good to have extra storage, extra space for those deployments and the firefighters to put their extra gear. In this compartment, we have a trunk progressive pack, which we'll describe that in a second. Two more packs of web gear, portable water pump hack. Uh, we have a couple of those as well. Like I mentioned before, this compartment just provides easy access to hand tools for us to be able to uh, cut fire, fire line and uh, do all the fun stuff that wildland firefighters do. In this compartment, we have more progressive hose packs, and we're gonna give you a demonstration of what that looks like right now. So we're gonna give an example of the progressive hose pack. Uh, the effervescent Captain Monty Fleming is gonna take off with the pack to the brush truck. What this allows us to do is cover a lot of ground and be able to fight fire that's very far away from the brush truck itself. So if you look, it plays out of the pack. It's gonna drop the pack and pull, pull it out. What is inside of that pack is 100 feet of, uh, of inch and a half line with another 100 feet of uh, one, inch. one inch line that is taped to it. So what happens is we can break that tape, charge this line, and then the smaller hose we can use to create uh, an arc around that hose that we pull out. And it's also connected to a gated Y, which allows us to connect another progressive hose pack to that and continue on again and again and again um, to get to fire further away from where we need to keep the rig. Once hoses are cleaned and maintained, we reload them back in the progressive hose pack so that they can be quickly deployed at the next major incident. We load them like this so that they all pay out from the top and uh, in a clean, organized fashion, the right way every time. Our wildland tool complement on Brush 19 Type 6 includes a combi tool, two rhinos, a Pulaski, a shovel, a McLeod, and some bolt cutters should we need to get through fencing material. Thank you.